Hello, I uh, thought I'd make a video documenting the removal of this fireplace. Um, I've already had the gas fire removed, that was £80. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube, mostly American. Excuse the dog. Um, so I thought I'd make a UK version, UK tools, sort of on the cheap, because uh, I don't have that much money, but we're going to get rid of that. I've already taken the top off, which is over here. That was nice and easy with a um, chisel and a brick hammer. I've got the chisel and this Stanley brick hammer, which is class, I'd highly recommend, uh, from Amazon. Uh, and I will show you the other tools in a second. This is the rotary hammer that I'll be using um, to take out the bricks. I tried to use my brick hammer this morning and uh, it did not work. So, well, it was kind of getting there, but it was going to take me probably a few hours per brick. So I'm giving up and I'm going to try and use this. This was about £80 from Screwfix. Um, I mean, it has quite a lot of functions by the look of it. It can also be sort of like a drill and a hammer. Um, so I think it's going to come in handy sort of like for years to come. So a bit of an investment, like I said, £80 to get the fireplace done and £80 for this. So not horrendously expensive to hopefully get rid of all of this. Another small point I should say is that there was obviously gas connected to this old fireplace. And I got a, a gas engineer to come in and take it down to here and he sort of, I think he used the blowtorch to uh, seal it off. Um, but he said sort of if, just to be very careful around this entry point and if he's, if I can smell gas to call him, but obviously I can turn off the gas pipe as well. Um, but I'm just going to be extra careful around here and try and sort of use the drill hammer as, as, as little as I can around here and try and be more manual so I can be a bit more careful. In terms of safety equipment, we want um, some goggles that sort of have like a suction over your eye. And that also means that they don't really fog up as much when you've got a mask on because obviously the air can't get through, which is very helpful. Uh, I've also put some dust sheets around. I feel like dust is just going to get anywhere, everywhere anyway. I've already had a rewire, so I'm used to that. But yeah, um, dust it up, close some doors, put the dog away, obviously. Um, and I'm going to open this and try and make a start. So we open this up, we have the actual hammer drill. Is it called a hammer drill? You can tell I'm really good at this. Rotary hammer is the official name. Um, rotary hammer, and you've got sort of like... Oh, Christ, this is heavy. Uh, you've got a drill and hammer setting, which we're not going to use today because we want to get rid of bricks. So we're going to do that. Um, and it's just going to be on that hammer setting and I'm going to be using, I think, mainly this, um, just to chisel out the bricks. Don't really think there's anything else. Um, other pieces I'm going to be using, obviously we have this, which is a bit more like a stabby one. That's the technical term. And um, yeah, I'm going to put these in, try and make a start, hopefully not kill myself or anything like that. Done a few bricks, probably about half a dozen. A few reflections. Um, speed five seems to be the sweet spot for these kind of bricks, and they are just pure concrete, I think. So five or six, four wasn't really doing much, and it took a while to get the first couple of bricks off. So that's another thing to note. Um, there's a lot of dust, and definitely wear some uh, proper boots while you're doing it, because you don't want a brick to land on your foot or anything. Um, I usually have been going sort of when it starts to come off um, and then just go to manual, uh, just so sort of you're not using a really powerful tool when it's already shaking and coming off so the brick doesn't fly off or something stupid like that. But yeah, it is actually working. It's really, um, it's working really well. A lot of dust, um, I'll carry on. Uh, I don't have much else to add really because all I did afterwards was just carry on taking the bricks off and then a bit of slate off the bottom as well. Um, I changed my masks a couple of times because it got extremely dusty and I was a bit worried about inhaling any soot or anything. Uh, I did use a P3 respirator, if that helps. Um, but yeah, there, there was a smell of mildew coming from the um, bricks at the bottom that you can see I've covered in baking powder to try and mask the smell a bit, uh, which did seem to help. What I intend to do with this is um, 
just go around sort of where I've drawn that white line and get rid of the brick that the old owner put in and then hopefully make a nice hollow. Afterwards, uh, I'm going to put a beam a bit higher than where that white line is. Um, just probably a fake one, see how that goes. Um, and hopefully it won't cost too much to finish all that off. This is going to be the finished product kind of that uh, I'm going to go for. Um, apart from that slate thing at the bottom, I don't really want the fireplace to stick out too much. That's the issue I had with the one I've got at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so I want it to be compact and more like a, a, a fitted inside the chimney one.